Shelby. I don't apologise for repeating. I mean, I had the presence of mind to leave in the bedroom. I put a bit of onky on a bit of paint. I went downstairs for a nightcap. I said, evening, barman. Can I help you? He said, yes, can I? Said, I said, um, it's, it's a pint a bit of sun. He said, excuse me, sir, it occurs to me. He said, that uh, you're a newlywed couple. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah. He said, under no circumstances whatsoever, drink bitter. It shrivels it up. <laughs> what you want is a large brandy. Make you like a bleeding lion. I said, give us a large brandy, Winkle. What a up. <laughs> I went away, I'll come back an hour later, barman. Terrific, terrific. Give us another large brandy. <laughs> and a pint of bitter for the wife. <laughs> It was like frying a woodbine in the Albert Hall, it was. <laughs> yes, we can't have sex anymore on religious grounds. She reckons she's Jewish and I'm a pig. <laughs> I'm laying there the other night. She said, no, we're not having full sex. I suppose you want a wank. I thought, oh, that's nice. <laughs> I said, what? She said, I don't know if you if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> she said, well, let me know when you're finished. I'll be outside the door. <laughs> I played golf with a wife the other day. We got in a club, that's straight on the first tee. Next to the first tee is a, is a practice ground. And a professional stand there with a, with a woman golfer. She had 302 lessons. This pro was going mad. He said, Mrs. Davis, he said, please. He said, I'm losing my temper. He said, I, he said you're making me look bad in, in, a, in front of my other brother professionals. He said, Mrs. Davis, the game of golf is very, very simple. He said, please don't think I'm being rude. Please don't think I'm being rude. He said, you had 302 lessons. He said, the golf club is a tool. It's an instrument. Uh, I'm not being rude, Mrs. Davis. Please just treat the golf club as if it was your husband's penis, darling. Gently, gently. She hit this ball. <laughs> 285 yards, straight down the middle. The pro said, Mrs. Davis, wonderful. Fucking marvellous. Now, take the club out of your mouth, he said. <laughs> Picture the scene. <laughs> Captain and a boatswain are signing up for this ship in the 15th century. They can't get enough men. They've done, been out there and put shillings in vases and hit people on the heads. They still ain't got enough crew. All of a sudden, they're signing up. Two fellas come walking down the street. And the boatswain went, don't sign these men up, Captain. He said, why? He said, that's the ugly brothers. Well, when he looked round, one of these brothers has got eyes about three and a half foot long. Ah, oh, get out of here. <laughs> and the other one had ears, well, I want to fucking tell him, like, like elephant, you know. He said, we've got a son. He said, we ain't got enough men. He said, stick them in a the crow's nest. They're out of sea, 16 days. All of a sudden, this one with the eyes leaned over, he went, Captain! He said, what? He said, there's a Spanish man of war. 294 mile off the starboard bow. <laughs> the captain said, how fucking far? Because <laughs> he spoke English, this captain. <laughs> he said, how do you know it's a Spanish man of war? He said, I can see it from here. He said, well, how do you know it's Spanish? He said, my brother can hear him talking. <laughs> All of a sudden, it was run down by an English man of war. And all of a sudden, as it came into view, the boatswain went, Captain. He said, whoa, whoa, whoa. what? He said, the man in the... C -c 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 the man in the... C -c 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 crow's nest said, the S -s 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 Spanish... Spanish... Spanish man of war off the... Port bow. The captain went, boatswain? Bring the guns to Bring the guns to And the cat boatswain went the captain and the boatswain went together. The boatswain went, Captains, the guns are the guns are the guns are ready. And the captain went for the for the the fire! And the guns went ba ba ba.
listen. <laughs> fella walking along a canal in the distance. He said these two guys, they dragged this geezer out the canal. They got him on the side of the canal, giving him artificial respiration. <laughs> there is gallons of green gungy water coming out of this geezer's north. <laughs> well, let him boot fish bone frog. <laughs> Bike frame bedstead. <laughs> He walked up, he said, what the bleeding hell are you doing, pal? He said, no matter what we're doing, mister. He said, you want to mind your own business. We're ambulance men, we're trained. We know what we're doing. He said, you might be ambulance men. He said, you might be trained. He said, I'll tell you something, son. I'm an engineer, and if you don't take his ass out of the water, you're going to pump that fucking canal dry. <laughs> now, Every Friday, regular, month in, month out, year in, year out, half past five, this is geese used to walk in the chemist, strike to the chemist, give us free. Chemist said to him one day, son, you've been coming every year for a packet of free. Why don't you use your brains, get yourself a good washable one? He said, are any good? He said, they're marvellous. He said, how much are they? He said, five and twenty, Bob. He said, I'm on the firm. Following Friday, he was back in, give us free. <laughs> chemist said, what's wrong with the washable one? He said, you lousy bastard. <laughs> Should have seen the letter I got from the fucking laundry. <laughs> This will kill you, this one. We'll have an early night. <laughs> There's a griddler walking through the jungle. And as he's walking past this water hole, he sees a lion uh, having a drink. And this lion's Aris was going... <laughs> griddler thought... <laughs> I'll have some of that. <laughs> he went down, he grabbed the ground, lion by the lawns, and away he went. Wee, wee. Lion went, fucking turn it in. <laughs> the griddler went, get on that. Fuck off the lion, Steve! <laughs> when it was all over, the griddle let go of the lion and run in the jungle. The lion turned around and ran after the griddle. The griddle was running through a clearing in the jungle. As you got this clearing, in the middle of this clearing, the geezer sitting there with a pith helmet reading a paper in a deck chair. He's seen the griddle, the pith helmet went that way, the paper went that way, the deck chair went that way. The griddle's grabbed the bleeding deck chair, stuck it up, grabbed the paper, started to read, put the pith helmet on. As he's put the pith helmet on, the lion coming to the jungle, he went... <sighs> he said, you seen a griddle around here? And the griddle went... Not the one that fucked the lion down by the water hole. <laughs> and the lion went, it ain't in the paper already, is it? <laughs> Father Christmas came down the chimney into this beautiful little bedroom in the middle of this bedroom, there was a beautiful young girl standing there in a negligee. Father Christmas went, ho, ho, ho. She says, you want to stay for 10 minutes, Father Christmas? She said, leave me. I ain't got time for that bloody nonsense. I've got to go all over Europe. She said, no mind about that. She got her finger and her thumb, undone the bow of this blouse, and it fell away. Oh, fellas. Oh, you know. Uh, oh, she had nipples like six inch now. So. <laughs> Father Christmas said, fucking turn it in. He said, will ya? He said, I've got to go all over Europe. She said, no mind about that. She got her thumbs in her panties and pulled them down over this lovely rounded sailotch. <laughs> Father Christmas said, you lousy bastard. <laughs> he said, I've got to stay now. I can't get back up that fucking chimney. <laughs> Little boy playing on the side of the road. Up come the local vicar. He said, hello, Tommy. What are you doing? He said, I'm playing. No, nice. I can see you're playing, Tommy. What are you playing with? He said, prussic acid. He said, you can't play with prussic acid, Liam. Prussic acid is dangerous. He said, don't tell you how to play with holy water, do I? He said, but holy water and prussic acid are two entirely different things. Now, for instance, last Thursday, I put some holy water on a lady's belly, and she passed a baby. As Nami said, little Tommy, last night I put some prussic acid on my dog's bollocks, and he passed a Ferrari. <laughs> Little boy come running open school up. He was stuck through stairs to his mum and dad's bedroom. His mum and dad on the bed. Dad's giving mum one. He said, Mum, what are you doing? He said, I'm playing crib. Your father's my partner. Get downstairs. He went straight downstairs into the lounge. In the lounge on the couch is his sister with her boyfriend, Tony. Her legs are quarter past nine. Tony's bum is a blur. <laughs> He says, sister, what are you doing? So I'm playing crib. Tony's my partner. Get out in the garden. He rushed straight into the garden, into the gardening shed. In the gardening shed, there's his old granddad flogging his Oris. Wee! Wee! <laughs> he said, granddad, what are you doing? He said, I'm playing crib. He said, where's your partner? He said, when you've got a fucking good hand, you don't need a partner. <laughs> Father 
Fifteen-year-old boy started working a chemist. The boy's very first job out of school. Naturally enough, the kid was nervous, and the chemist stuck him straight on the counter. And as he's standing, this young woman came in. She said, good morning. He said, morning, miss. <laughs> she said, oh, can I have a packet of Tampax, please? The kid went, ah. <laughs> ah. He ran straight back in the shop. The chemist said, what's wrong with you? He said, there's a woman out there. What's in Tampax? He said, son, it's a chemist. Go and serve her, for Christ's sake. A week later, the kid's getting used to the job, and the same woman come in. I said, morning, can I have a packet of cotton more, please? Oh, he said, you're rolling your own now. He said, <laughs> <laughs> Teacher in school. So this kid, now we're going to have to, an essay today. I'm going to ask you some questions. She said, now, David, she said, if you wasn't covered in skin, what would you like to be covered in? Oh, he said, uh, um, Gold, miss, gold. She said, why is that? She said, well, every time I scratch myself, miss, it will leave a little pile of gold and, and, and I, I could buy a BMW. That's very good. I said, Derek, what about you? He said, I'd, I'd like to be covered in, in platinum. He said, why is that? He said, well, right, Dave. He said, when I scratch myself, I said, I'll get a pile of platinum. He said, platinum's worth more than gold uh, and I could have a Mercedes and a BMW. So what about you, Harry? Yeah, I said, uh, pubic hair. <laughs> I said, why pubic hair? He said, well, my sister's got a patch like that, and you want to see the fucking motors outside her? Right? <laughs> you know something about teachers. And you must forgive me, I mean, I'm an atheist. I don't mind owning up to that, I just know that's the way I am. And there's a lot of people believe in all that. But, you know, and I've owned that court about five weeks ago. I lost my licence, right? I've been out playing golf with the boys, as you know, we all can get out with it. And I've had three out of pints of shandy. I've got my collar felt on the way home, right? I'm in court there. 200 sovs I find, right? 200 sovs. An 18 months bleeding licence. I'm walking out the door, and all of a sudden, the next case behind me is a vicar been interfering with choir boys, right? Yeah, I thought, you dirty old bastard. <laughs> anyway, I'm at the end of the case, and the magistrate said yes. He said, well, he said, two pounds fined, he said. And, uh, he, and uh, I said, wait a fucking minute. <laughs> wait a minute. I said, you charged me 200 sovs, 18 months loss of licence for having three halves of shandy. That dirty old bastard been interfering with choir boys. I said, you find him two sovs. The judge went, sit down. Fucking sit down, he said. <laughs> I want to tell you something, son. I've heard that choir sing and they needed fucking. <laughs> Teacher in school, micro mini skirt, writing on the ball. She got on her toes to get to the top of the ball. The skirt's freezing up and her knickers are coming to view. And one of these boys went... <laughs> Stand up the boy with a horn. And all the class did that. <laughs> said, who can tell me who said, give us the tools and we'll finish the job? A great English statesman, a little black boy in the front guy. He said, Miss Winston Churchill, 1942. And a voice at the back of the class went, send the black bastard home. <laughs> who said that? He said, Enoch, pal. <laughs> And please, please believe me, I see we've got one or two of our ethnic minorities in the audience, and I swear this with God, I haven't, you know, I haven't got a racialist bone in my body. Live and let live. And I'm sure you can understand on the odd occasion, I, you know, like most of us, we get a bit pissed off. <laughs> and what are we coming to over here? Bar, bar, green sheep. <laughs> Try me out Sunday morning, sit down, 10 o'clock, egg and bacon on your lap for breakfast, switch in the box. What do you got? Asian magazine. What the fucking hell's going on there? <laughs> There's a geezer sitting down here, he's got a 984 string guitar. <laughs> he's got his knackers strapped in a vice. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I can turn it in, will you? <laughs>